Hey One Piece players, so I went to my first One Piece Treasure Cup, One Piece per, uh, Corona, and spoiler alert, it went horribly, if you couldn't tell by the thumbnail. Now, I still had a blast, everyone was a ton of fun, super nice, and it was a great way for me to get back into the game. Now, I had been practicing a bunch of Bonnie leading up to the event, RP Law was still legal, but I wasn't able to get my copies of Cavendish. So, instead of playing Cavendish, I had to either commit to just bon like Bonnie without Cavendish, or switch decks. And I figured, you know what, why don't I, why don't I play Moria? And so Moria... Uh, I'm gonna go through if you have if you've played Moria before if you're familiar with Moria phenomenal, but as a As a content creator. I want to create content that even if you are new to the game You can still follow it. So Gecko Moria uh, Has an ability that when he attacks he can have you discard a card mill two cards so trash two cards on the top of your deck into your graveyard and then you can bring a Thriller Bark Pirate that costs four or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, in order to do that, you need to have Thriller Bark cards. Uh, we had we were rocking the Perona sleeves, by the way. Um, very fitting for Thriller Bark. So we have our Searcher for the deck. Instead of playing anything that gets us stuff to our hand, we're playing Victoria Sindri. A 2k counter that also allows us to on play mill five cards to so put five cards from our deck to our graveyard and get our engine going so that's in there as a four of on top of Sindri we are also playing four copies of a 2k counter Perona Perona is amazing because you can either use her to counter or you can use her to discard to Moria's effect. She allows you to, when she plays, she will, dis she can make you your opponent discard a card or she can reduce the cost of your opponent, uh, opponent's creature. She's a great card, a four cost 5k can get off of your leader. Absalom can return cards from your graveyard to your deck in order to KO something. There's our KO potential. Dr. Hogback is able to uh, return cards from your graveyard to your deck in order to get a different Thriller Bark card from your graveyard to your hand, which can be used for any of the cards here uh, before, as well as anything that's not even a four cost, like four Gecko Moria. Gecko Moria is a combo card that allows us to play a four cost and a two cost from our graveyard. Now we are playing three more Thriller Bark cards. We are playing Negative Hollow. Negative Hollow is a card that trashes a card from your opponent's hand at random. So don't let them choose. Perona, the, Perona they get to choose. Negative Hollow, you pick a card, while, like they fan their cards out to you and you pick a card. And so I, what I really liked to do with this card was attack, 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 get them to discard the cards that they didn't, that they were willing to use for counter, and then play that post combat. And what you were able to do was get rid of the card that they wanted to hold on to. And so I could even go Gekamoria, attack, reanimate Perona. Perona is then able to make them discard a card and then we use negative hollow to force them to discard a random card you can also use uh hogback to get this card back to your hand so there were times in the practice rounds leading up to the treasure cup where i would play negative hollow go to the graveyard play hogback get negative hollow back to hand play negative hollow and now they've discarded two cards at random, and I would do this after attacks where they'd already countered, and so I made my opponent discard things they did not want to discard. 
And I will tell you, my practice games leading up to the event went way better than the actual event. Um, which I feel like is going to be how it always goes for me. Uh, on top of the 8 cost Moria and our leader, we also are playing two copies of Blocker Rebecca as a way to get a 3 to 7 cost from our graveyard to our hand, and we can play something. We do have a few things that we can play off of Rebecca. I didn't like Rebecca in this deck, if I'm going to be quite frank. Um, I much I would have much rather play more Borsalinos, which I have in here, or I could have played some more KO cards, something that kills, uh, really actually kills the opponent's characters. Um, we are playing on top of our blocker package, we are playing two Borsalinos, which ended up coming into in handy very well in a lot of matchups, and four copies of Blocker Sabo. Blocker Sabo's in here as a way to filter, he draws two, discards two, he is protection for your whole board for a turn because he can't be KO'd by card effects. They can be bottom decked, they can be returned to your hand, they just can't be KO'd. On top of that, we do have some reducer effects. Uh, so we already have Perona, but we also have some ways to lower the cost of our opponent's cards, such as Suru to give minus two, Hina to give minus four, Ice Age to give minus five, Kuzan to repeatedly give minus four if they allow him to live, and Helmeppo to give minus three. Now, these cards, out of them, only Suru, Ice Age, and Helmeppo can be played on the same turn as a Gekko Moria. So I suggest you play Suru, Ice Age, or Helmeppo, and then you play your Gekko Moria then you can go get another uh, another Helmopo, another Suru, lower it even more, the character you're trying to remove, and then you can get you can get the Absalom or you can get the uh, Rob Lucci that we are playing that allows you to KO an opponent's thing. Now, I wish I had played some more KO cards. I didn't I was not running three three cost book. So I was running Absalom uh, as a four of one Rob Lucci, two Garps. These are my Sakazukis, but they're also repeatable. Um, they're really good in matchups where it's going to be a little slower. Maybe you're, you're expecting a lower uh, cost on your opponent's characters. Uh, Garp was just very good at removing four costs, and I actually got to use him multiple times in multiple games. And I did play two 8-cost Savos on top of it because this was a really good way that I was able to deal with Reju. Now, in the practice matches, I, I did not lose to Reju. I did not lose to Reju in the practice matches because of Sabo. I replaced Ishos with Sabo. I was already playing uh, Peronas. I was playing Negative Hollows. My opponents were not going to be at six or more cards by the time I got to eight. Uh, Dawn, they almost never were. Um, now, if I had to go back, I would probably take out two Rebecca's and one Sabo, and I would add in three things that could KO. Maybe I would go Rob Lucci, maybe I would go more Sabos, but I needed something. Uh, I wanted more stuff that could actually kill my opponent's things. Uh, now, for the actual matchups, my first mat this this is a deck list this is everything for the actual matchups i uh my first matchup was versus green bonnie the deck that i was going to bring and then of course i didn't uh because cavendish but uh there's i don't want cavendish to be as expensive as it is i can't afford too much cardboard so then um First game, Bonnie, very close game. They kept forgetting their Bonnie triggers, which is okay. They seemed like a new Bonnie player, but I felt like I could have easily won that game. Um, I played, 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 and then they strung two Doflamingos on me. I had played a Sabo thinking, oh, all my characters are tapped, right? Uh, all my characters are rested. They can't rest anything with Basil Hawkins. Then I realized that the Sabo I played, guess what, was active and could be rested. 
So what I needed to do was, uh, I needed to have two KO effects or not even bother playing it and save this later for maybe the Doflamingo that was dropped. Um, they also played a kid that same game. They went Doflamingo, Doflamingo, kid, and at that point the game was over. Uh, I went to my next game. Game two was versus Green Yellow Yamato. Game was super close. They did try to KO my Borsalino uh, during their turn with a Yamato, nine cost. And nine cost Yamato can target Borsalino. It just doesn't go through. And in a competitive environment, your opponent is not allowed to take that move back. Once they declare Borsalino as a target, that's the target. Now, that may different environments may have different levels of enforcement. At the event I was at, it was considered that they had declared their target, and it just it didn't KO. Now, they were still able to heal off of it. There was a judge call about that. They were still allowed to heal off of it. I was pretty sure they were able to anyway, but it's always good to check, even if you think something's the case. Just check with your with your judge. They won't mind. Um, and so that game, I ended up grinding them out. I dropped a couple Morias, and I, was, uh, I dropped these. They were very worried about Borsalinos. I think they got in their head a little about it, which is, it's okay, I get it, It, but it meant that they were so focused on trying to deal with my Borsalinos, they couldn't deal with the rest of my board, and I ended up just winning by swinging with a bunch of characters. Uh, after that game, I went over and played versus a Do, a Do Flamingo deck. And versus Doflamingo, I kept clearing their board. I cleared, cleared, cleared. And the thing about this event, sure, I didn't win many games. I, in the end, I went one and I went one and four. But at no point, unless I lost the game like that turn or the next turn, the the Bonnie matchup, I feel like. I could have easily handled if I hadn't misplayed the Sabo. I could use the removal later. Um, but I feel that I was rarely in a losing position. I feel that my lack of experience caused me to lose a lot of games that I should have won. But that's part of getting back into the game right you can't let it get to you you just have to say crap that was bad but let's move forward what can we do next and so versus do flamingo i removed their board on repeat they kept refilling it kept refilling it i kept removing it and we got to a point where they dropped the 10 cost kaido i opted to not kill the kaido and that was my mistake they proceeded to open up a board uh, full of their cards, and they were able to get two Gravity Tigers off on me, bottoming my Sabos, bottoming my Borsalinos, and I wasn't able to defend against their 12k Kaido. I wasn't able to defend against their other things. If I had attacked that Kaido, then they wouldn't have had as big of a threat, and even though even though my blocker still would have been gone from Gravity Tiger, maybe my opponent wouldn't have felt like they were in a position where they could play that card, or maybe my opponent, uh, there are a lot of maybes, I could have potentially countered out of what they were trying to do. Um, now, when I went versus my next game, I lost that game. Uh, so I lost versus Bonnie, won versus Yamato, lost versus Doflamingo. Then I went towards black yellow luffy and black yellow luffy i waited 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 and i developed a huge board at one point i had three gecko morias um and at the point where i got three gecko morias i was like okay i can start attacking i should have started attacking sooner i felt like i missed my opportunity that i let my opponent develop too much 
and they were able to drop 10 drop Kuzon, 10 drop Kuzon, and I couldn't do anything. If I had attacked a cut like two, three turns earlier, maybe when I had one to two Gekomorias, I would have been able to just say, okay, you ha you it doesn't matter what you play because I'm just gonna kill it or it it's not gonna stop me from winning. If I had if I had taken my time, thought about it a little more, and attacked into my opponent sooner. My opponent even admitted, yeah, you would have won. Uh, which leads me to the next game where I also waited too long and my opponent also said, yeah, if you had attacked a little sooner, you would have won. I successfully starved the Black Yellow Luffy, won the game of card advantage, but didn't capitalize on my advantage, and that was my mistake. Now, when I went versus the next deck, which was Luchi without the stage, because they didn't actually, they didn't realize that the stage wasn't banned at that point. Um, they thought it, the announcement was, oh, it's banned. Um, so they were playing without it, and it was still an incredibly functional deck. Anybody who thinks that Luchi is dead is wrong. Um, and we were playing versus each other. I get my first Moria out, and I'm like, okay... I need to find a way to not not open up an opportunity for my opponent to kill my stuff. So I tried to play some Sabos, I played Borsalinos, those worked great, and I was about to win the game, and if if I had taken I had two Gecko Morias and they had one. And if I had taken out their Gecko Moria successfully, I won the game. And I put everything into trying to attack that Gecko Moria. But sometimes it would have just been more effective. Maybe if I had used my Ice Age to lower it. Um, I had a Hina. I had a huge misplay where I played Hina and realized I had no Absalom in my graveyard. And that's why I really, really want something additional in my KO package. I was only playing nine cards that could KO my opponent's things, and if I had anything in that moment that could have, uh, anything in that moment that could have benefited off of my Hina's, um, lowering their card by eight cost, I would have won the game. Now, that being said, I don't, right? I, I don't have my Absaloms. I misplayed with my Absalom too. Um, I also did a, a cost reduction on the Kaido when I eventually thought it was a threat. Um, and then realized that they had bottom decked my Absalom. They didn't kill it. So make sure that you're always paying attention to your graveyard um, for the decks that it matters for. And even if you don't think it matters, maybe you want to see, okay, what's the likelihood that I draw a Helm Epa? Well, there's one in my graveyard and there there are like 30 cards left in my deck it's 1 in 30 that I draw home Epo. so make sure that you pay attention to your stuff everyone was super super chill super nice a lot of giveaways throughout the event some posters I didn't get anything I did however get the Momonosuke promo and the Savo promo and I traded for the Trafalgar Law one I had a ton of fun playing I opened up my prize pack and I opened up a boa, not the Mongo one, but still the six drop, and I am looking forward to finding a spot for it somewhere. I had a ton of fun in my first, uh, in my first ever treasure cup, and I would highly recommend to anybody to go and uh, go to their store, see where you can find a treasure cup. They are a lot of fun.